Hi, and welcome to the course Introduction to Programming. My name is Christoph van Narohofer, and in this course I will teach you how to start with learning how to program, really. Um, and these are the slides, and this is basically the first lecture where I explain what we'll do in this semester. So this course is held every summer term, and these are my details if you ever need to contact me. So, here is a very quick overview of all the things we're doing. I hope you didn't see that, because that is none of your concerns so far. In this first couple of minutes, I will tell you a little bit about the organization that we are going to follow during this course. And the course is, in a nutshell, about programming an object-oriented programming language called C++. And we're going to focus on correctly programming in C++, not about learning things by heart, or by, um, or by solving things and just having to solve them. The course consists out of two lecture hours per week, two hours that you should spend on uh, the lab uh, assignments, and we assume that you will need two extra hours on that uh, at home. Since we're going to do everything virtually this uh, semester, I expect therefore that you will be about six hours a week busy with this course. We'll follow an ideal workflow where you have to write C++ code yourself constantly through these exercises to solve each task. In real time, you can, you can check whether your thing already works or not, because we have a certain built-in system that if you type check, you basically get immediate feedback whether your exercises are correct or not. We have tutors that will help you and give feedback. Those will be on the Moodle system, but also you can contact those in person. And we will ask you to present your solutions twice this semester. The lecture material will be completely in the Moodle system. So this is the URL if you haven't found out yet that this Moodle page exists. And all the updates, so these videos, the slides and everything else will be done through this Moodle system. Most importantly, we will learn C++ by doing it, by programming. So therefore, it's important that you follow the lectures. Now, I have to also uh, say that this course material is largely based on the material that was made available to me for, uh, from my colleague Roland Wiesmuller, and lots of things were also inspired by my former colleague, Professor Hannah Bast. These books over here are useful if you want to learn how to program in a quick amount of time and still know more or less what else you should be taking care of. But you cannot learn, uh, teach yourself or you cannot learn programming C++ in 10 minutes. The only thing that you can expect is that in these 10 minutes you somehow get a gist of what programming is like and that in the next years you develop yourself into an expert uh, C++ programmer because years it definitely will take. Now, something that is always important is the grading. Now, how do we grade um, this for this particular course? There are two parts. Half of it you'll have to do during the term. So during the term, you have about four sets of assignments that you'll have to complete. And for those four sets, you have 10 points each or 40 points in total. So this eight points should be 10, actually. And this you have to do in a two-week rhythm, usually. The presentation is about you showing your solution to one of the tutors twice in the semester. You can do this in the lab, or you can also do this in one of the other rooms that we have uh, uh, to our availability. More about that later on the Moodle website. That is accounting for 10 points in total. Now, what you do during the semester is very important. And I know it is enticing to just copy things from colleagues, but I warn you, please do not do that. It's not only very naughty, it is also quite easy to spot for us. Um, and we check it constantly. We have on our server, on which you'll have to do your exercises, a JPLAG instance running, which is constantly in real time checking whether people are copying code from others, including those from the past years. So please do your coding yourself. The results from the assignments will be usually uh, displayed a week later. Now, for the exam, which is the other half of the points, 
we expect you to program all by yourself on a sheet of paper, only just using a pen and maxly one page, an A4 page that you can print or write on on both sides. But that's it. You're not allowed to do anything else. You have to, of course, like with all exams, bring your ID. Um, and in the exam, you'll have to answer three to five programming tasks, which are either understanding programs and complementing them, filling in the blanks, or writing a complete new program all by yourself. So it's a mix of those two, but it will check or it will allow us to check whether your programming skills are up to a particular level or, or not. Now the important thing is that your next chance of doing this exam is in a year. So if you fail this time, it will mean that you, uh, you will have to wait another year to do this again. So please make sure that this does not happen. And from experience, it is, it is, it is extremely important to attend the lecture. In this case, look at the videos as they arrive. If you wait too long and try to binge watch just in the last couple of weeks of the season, uh, you probably will come into lots of problems. Because learning to program means that you can do this by yourself and this requires a lot of exercise. We'll do this in the lectures also by programming in real life. So you will also see how I will be programming or hopefully that will also teach you a lot on programming skills. Right, so part of it is there for programming assignments throughout the semester. We'll start this week already with your assignments, which will be fairly simple, um, but it will be already a start. And you'll be able to um, call in the help of our tutors. More details about that on our Moodle website. The assignments usually have to complete by a certain deadline, and the deadline tends to be Friday, 5 o'clock. This particular time has two reasons. First of all, we want you to have a weekend available to yourself or for other courses. But also it's important that until 5 o'clock on Friday, we can support you and answer any last minute questions you might still have. Now for the programming assignments, we'll do exactly the same as last year, meaning you'll have to log in via Secure Shell into our server and do all your programming there. This is a little bit of a pain, but it allows you to focus on the bare bone task of programming without any IDE, integrated developer environment, development environment, or any bells and whistles that you might be used if you've done already programming. In this case, you learn what the essence or the essential parts of programming are. So there are three steps you have to follow, and we'll do this in, in a, a follow-up video. But the first thing is that you have to install an SSH client. Now, some computers already come with this. So if you have a Linux system or a Mac, then you usually have a terminal uh, installed in that, and SSH is part of that. So you can just type in SSH to execute um, an SSH tunnel towards our server. If you have Windows, you can use the command terminal, or you could also download a client such as Putty. Here is the URL for that one. There are loads of alternatives, um, and we found in the past year that loads of those work really well. Now, once you have an SSH client, you have to SSH into our server. Here is the address. Make sure that it's port 22, which is the default port for Secure Shell. And your username and password are not called handouts. That would be a little bit too easy. No, we will hand them out through email. The next step, and that is the most important one that we'll just do today, is to get familiar in our server's Linux environment. Since we're operating in Linux and doing everything in Linux, we'll just have to know a few commands. And these are the following. So with these commands, you probably will be able to do everything for the whole semester already. So there are very simplistic ones. So here I'm already logged in as a student uh, in our system. Um, with PWD, you can show the present working directory. In this case, I'm uh, a particular student in a particular home, and this is my directory. I can't go backwards uh, to look at the rest of the system, uh, but this is what I know uh, is my uh, directory that I can uh, work in. 
Now, if I want to know what files are available for this particular directory, I can type ls. ls shows you what types are available. And with ls-l, I can show you also a list and all the uh, details for those particular files. The fact that, the fact that for instance, ex001 is a directory, uh, you can see it through the blue color, but you can also see it through the D over here. The rest is the writes, like read, write management, who created those files, etc. So in this case, I already, as this student, as part of a group of students, have created this particular directory. And if I want to go into this directory, I can do this with the cd command. Now, if this directory was not there yet, or if I want to make a new directory, which we will have to with new exercises, we can use the make dir command. So say that our next exercise is the second exercise, or the seventh exercise, we can create ex007, and then you'll see that we'll have a new directory available that we can change into. So cd change directory ex007, and now we're there which is an empty directory because there's nothing in there. So let's go back to our home directory. There we are. And let's go to the example 001 directory. Also, this one is completely empty. We don't have anything yet. So let's do a very simplistic C or C++ example. In this case, we'll just use an editor, a text editor, which is called Nano. It's a very ba basic and bare bones text editor that has usually students grumbling because it is so basic and it doesn't have any bells and whistles. However, I think it is extremely important that we use a very simplistic system so that you can focus on the programming and not on anything else. We won't be doing lots of programming anyway, so I think most of the assignments should allow you to think and not really about typing in lots of text in particular programming environments. So the nano editor uh, can uh, be used to create a file. Let's call this file .cpp. Hi is the, the name of the file. CPP is the extension for C++. That is the extension that we'll use most of the time in this course. And if we press enter, we are now in the nano environment. And you can see that we're editing the file hi.cpp, which is a text file. Now, this is something that will come later, but the most simple function or the most simple program that we can write in C is something like this. Um, a C program always has a main function. We know argument we don't we can sometimes have arguments here but we're not going to provide any arguments and we're going to return an integer. This is usually the standards that you need to adhere to. And inside this function or this is the function, the main function is the function that will automatically be called whenever you execute this piece of code as a program. And we're not doing anything else but returning a particular number. For instance, 117. There we go. Now, this is our program. So our program will basically execute this return and 117, which basically means that it, this program will return the number 117 to our operating system. If we then save this with Ctrl S and then quit with Ctrl Q, we are back into our original system, into our original uh, file, where now the hi.cpp file has been created. Now over here, you can see lots of other things that you might use. Now in this case, we want to compile this file because this is just a text file that you cannot execute yet. We want to compile this file into an executable, into something that you can execute in the system. And with that, we use the G++ compiler. Um, we add to that our file. And we, with the dash O option, you can even say what your program is called. For instance, hello. If we execute this and we don't get anything back, then everything worked as advertised. We can see in our directory again that there is now a new file being added and that this is an executable because it's in green in this particular client. You can execute this by providing the, the operating system with dot slash, which means in this directory, execute the executable hello. And if you then press enter, your executable has been executed. Now, it did not provide us this 117, but this is something that you can actually get into the operating system through this over here, the echo uh, dollar sign 
question mark. This means give me back the return value of the last statement that I made. The last statement is our program. So if I do dollar um, question mark, I should get our 17. And this way we will be able to see, um, uh, we will be able to program by just going into nano and then uh, compiling this and then executing this to see whether it works. Now in our course we will have a particular utility called check and this check utility will show us what already works and what doesn't. I'm not entirely sure if this will and normally this is a little bit bigger so make it, let's make it a little bit bigger here. Um, so if you execute check you see something like this happening. Um, we always ask you to provide a header. These are comments which uh, hold your name, your uh, student ID and other uh, things. So these are missing in my piece of code. Does my code work? Yes, because this is what was asked. Does the code compile? Yes. Um, or is the code my own work? Yes, this is uh, checking uh, the, C, uh, the JPLAC uh, server. The code, however, does not work. And here we can see what was uh, put in or what, uh, what we tried to put into our uh, system. And this is what we expect to get and what we did not get. That means because the exercise one usually is for a different type of thing. So once you want to provide a working um, a program that actually answers the assignments, we'll have to also make this into a green check. We'll also use cpplint to make sure that your code is constructed in a nice way. We'll check it according to indentation, we'll, construct, uh, we'll check it uh, for cpplint correctness. And also there you will get hints if it's not perfect uh, here after this line. So this uh, check program will show you uh, whether you, how far you are from a perfect example. So in this example, I still had to work out what uh, the assignment was. I basically wrote something that works, that compiles, that is my own work, but did not answer the assignment. So that's something I would still need to do. And I would still need to write my name and student ID and something else uh, in the header. So all those things are being checked. Once all of this is green, you can expect that your solution is a correct one. So let's now go to the organization. This is the rough schedule that we're going to follow this term. So this week we'll just have the introduction, this video, and a little bit of programming. The next weeks we'll start with very simplistic things, but then slowly we'll go into the more dangerous things in C and C++. Right. And this has been the first lecture. I hope to see you for the next lecture.